Hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Today we wanted to take a look at the new Honda Prologue EV and uh, some of the work we're doing and some of the differences with uh, the new uh, Toyota and Honda EVs we're seeing come to market. So let's take a look. So on our Honda, we had a side impact accident here and we had to bench and measure the car on our select bench. And uh, we had to replace a piece of the aperture assembly here and so that's plugged back in and we're getting ready to go back in. But we wanted to take a look at some of this vehicle and the battery itself and the battery install on the Honda. So what we know about the Prologue is it's really a GM. It's, a, it's primarily built on the, I believe, Chevy Blazer EV, maybe Equinox Foundation. They may be the same. So it's, a, it's really a GM uh, more than a Honda. I know Honda had some input on the styling of the vehicle and uh, the exterior and interior. But if you look closely, you can see these really are uh, Chevy. So battery technology is very similar to all the other GM vehicles. So we'll take a look at uh, the battery itself and installing. So in this repair, we've obviously had to make room for a bench and measuring underneath. We've got our pinch weld clamps remaining and the rest of the measuring systems out of the vehicle. But on this, we have to take the high voltage battery out of the vehicle so that we can make those repairs. So we've got our bench slid out from underneath of this vehicle. And as you can see, we're getting ready to pull the battery back in. So let's, uh, let's pull the battery in and we'll take a look at it. So looking at the battery case on this vehicle, we can see it's, uh, it looks similar to a Tesla battery in that we've got some uh, big outer reinforcements here, some, some structure here to hold it. But the, case, the top case is different, unlike a Tesla where there's a single layer case the axis from the top. This has a sort of a penthouse looking component and we know that GM uses more of the pouch style cell versus uh, the uh, cylindrical cell. But similar in shape and size to a Tesla battery, although this one's a little bit shorter. What we do know is that on these batteries they don't have the same rapid mate or quick connect technology that Tesla uses where you can just simply unbolt it and drop the, uh, drop the battery where the low voltage connections, the high voltage connections, and all the thermal management system cooling connections uh, automatically come into place. So these are very manual. This battery essentially just bolts up in the vehicle and then you have to make all your connections from the front. So when we look at the front here, we can see those components here. And again, it's high voltage, so we want to be careful, but we've got our thermal management, so our cooling lines in and out, and we've got our high voltage components in orange and our low voltage components there in black. So they all connect directly from the front versus a Tesla that sort of plugs in from the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull this, uh, we'll pull this one in. Good on tire clearance? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring this battery up and make the connection and it's essentially just mounting points although on this vehicle it's a different installation than some of these other EVs. This vehicle does have pinch welds uh, very much like a traditional vehicle where Teslas don't have these pinch welds so a little more challenging to get the car and the battery mated on a Tesla. The mating uh, process is actually very simple but you have to be super precise whereas here it's sort of bulky and we're just going to put this uh, up into the vehicle. So critical to this is understanding where we are in space so that we don't have any uh, issues with where the uh, lift is on this vehicle. So we'll bring it up slowly and we'll take a peek and see as we get closer if we're in the right space. We can see here there's cutouts to access this pinch weld here front. There's one in the back as well. Um, fortunately in the back the lift arms can be out of the way so we don't have to consider that but on the front we certainly need to make sure this lift arm is clear so that we can put this battery up in the vehicle. This can be a challenge dropping the battery on this when you have to do frame and structural work on these vehicles because you may have this car up and down on the lift three or four times to get the right clearance and then to get the right access for the bench as it comes up underneath the vehicle to replace it. But I think we're aligned here so we're going to go ahead and put this battery back up in. Critical to this is always having extra hands to keep eyes on everything. Obviously we got a few thousand pound battery and a few thousand pound car that we're trying to mate up and a lot of voltage in here as well. So uh, it's critical you got as many people as possible to take a look at this thing, make sure we're going in accurately. So I'm going to come up. You guys good? Yeah. All right. 
So battery is aligned, it's gonna go back in now. We'll grab the bolts and fasten and torque everything down, reattach all the high voltage, low voltage components, as well as the thermal management system. And I'm sure we'll have to fill and purge this battery to get any uh, air out of it so that we can go to the next step. But in the process of putting this back together so that we can send it forward in our process, do the paint work and the rest of the collision repair work on this vehicle. So just wanted to take a moment and show you what the new Honda Prolog looks like, especially with the HV battery out of it, and uh, where kind of Honda is right now with uh, electric vehicles, as well as some of the challenges with uh, fixing these things. So as always, any questions about anything at all, please leave comments below and we'll answer them as always. Uh, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Bye.